All right. You and, you and I, you and I need to have a talk. Today, you're going to get the teaser. Today's the teaser day. Today's the day for you to make the move. To get on the winning team, go to Patreon and you'll get the patreon.com backslash Illuminati Watcher and you'll get the whole show today. The bonus content for the Patreon supporters is a full film analysis of AI, the 2001 film. Now you say, Isaac, that film's 18 years old. Yeah, but it's relevant. Okay, it's relevant. Kubrick, you know Kubrick was involved? Kubrick wanted to make this film in the 70s because he knew. Kubrick knows the truth. He knows the future plan and the master agenda and the occult stuff. That's And it's all in the film. And I break it down for you. We're going to get into Gnosticism, all-seeing eyes, the spiral symbol that you saw in The Revenant, and True Detective, and Home, that alien cartoon with Rihanna. It's a spiral of evolution. It's in the movie, too. Did you know that? Sexy robots. They're making the sexy time with the robots. That's how they're going to get us to go down that slippery slope. No pun intended. Fake moons. Blue fairies. Gray aliens. It's all there. It's the Illuminati bowl of lucky charms. And we're going to get into it today. I'm going to give you the teaser because that's how this is going to go down. I'm going to tease you with some of the show. And if you like it, go sign up. But let me tell you, let me tell you what else you're going to get. You're going to get no more of those annoying commercials because you get your own private RSS feed. You get early access to every episode. You get bonus content just like this show. Nipsey Hustle. We did a big Nipsey Hustle show. Ebook. You get a copy of The Dark Path. How much is that worth to you? That's worth a lot of money. That's worth millions of dollars. Wisdom. And of course, pride. Pride in knowing that you support. Your favorite independent creator, Isaac Weishaupt. Now, we're going to get into... I, I've got some of the images posted up on IlluminatiWatcher.com. You can take a look at those images also. Um, we're going to go through the teaser the first few minutes. It's a dystopian film, of course. Uh, the Illuminati Evolution of Consciousness. The robots waking up. It's the same stuff you hear so often. But it's so true, right? It's so true. But look, I'm going to tell you right now, you can turn this off and just go sign up. Don't even listen to the teaser. Just go sign up and get it. You'll get the full bonus sh uh, show today for the price of a cup of coffee. Come on, everyone. You know the cup of coffee analogy. You love it. And if you can't, that's fine too. But I'm telling you, do you value our time together? Do you hate commercials? I hate commercials. You can go sign up. Today's the day. Come on, you just got paid. Make it happen. And even if you don't, that's all right. I still love you. Uh, but listen to the teaser. See what you think. And uh, if this is your month to make the move, make the move. And if not, it's all good. You can stay on the fence. Stay on the free feed. I appreciate your listenership either way. I appreciate you keeping an open mind to these topics. Anyways, let's get into it. Here's a little teaser. See what you think. When's your birthday? I never had a birthday. His name is David. I feel it. That's creepy. Whoa. That's so real. <laughs> in a distant future, in an age of intelligent machines, he is the first robotic child programmed to love and coexist as a member of a family. His is a tale of humanity and a journey to find his place among humans and machines. I'm a boy. You are a real boy. At least as real as I've ever made one. In June of 2001, we received Stanley Kubrick's last warning for humanity. Steven Spielberg film AI was released after over 30 years since Kubrick's first desire to create such a movie. Due to insufficient technology available in the 1970s, 
Kubrick kept this project on the back burner until the mid-1990s, when we saw technological advancements displayed in Jurassic Park. Kubrick worked with Spielberg to get the dystopian adaptation of Super Toys Last All Summer Long by Brian Aldiss, but he would pass away before seeing the finished product. Join along as we break down the symbolism of Spielberg's AI. Hi there, this is your host Isaac. We're going to talk about AI, the the final film, some say, of Stanley Kubrick. You know we've covered Stanley Kubrick a lot in the past. I have the entire Kubrick's Code project available online on gumroad.com. You can watch a, a three-hour video I put together of it. Because Kubrick knew. He knew what was going on in the inner circles of Hollywood and such. He knew the elitist game plan for humanity. That's the argument we put together when we look at 2001 A Space Odyssey, Clockwork Orange with its MK Ultra Mind Control, Eyes Wide Shut, of course, and The Shining. It's all about the evolution of man through the lens of the Illuminati, of the occultist, the esoteric principles laid out on film. I actually got a message. This is anonymous. I got an anonymous message. This person went to Comic-Con. And they met Adam Baldwin. You know, an, uh, Animal from Full Metal Jacket. He was one of the celebrity guests. And this anonymous messenger wanted to meet Adam Baldwin. So, he asked Adam Baldwin... If Stanley Kubrick ever let the cast know about some of the symbolism and what it really meant and the deeper meanings of the symbols we see in the films, such as 2001 A Space Odyssey. Adam Baldwin responded, yeah, we would ask him things like, is the obelisk supposed to represent God? And he would respond, well, what do you think it means? Isn't that curious? Thanks for sharing that with me, anonymous, (laughs) by the way. Yeah, the obelisk is the phallus. It is the reference to the generative force of nature, the higher powers, the masculine principles which point us to the sun. And of course, the sun takes us to the enlightenment and the Illuminati and of course, Lucifer. It's always Lucifer. It's always Satan. Yeah, so AI, I've been wanting to give you a film analysis of this for many years. I should have done it with my Kubrick's Code book, but I didn't. I didn't really give it much thought. I don't know why, right? What the hell's wrong with me? AI, it's all about transhumanism and robots, consciousness. And it's always been on the back burner. I've been waiting to see it. I've been waiting for it to pop up on one of my subscription services because I didn't want to pay for it because I actually saw this movie in the theaters. I was very excited to see when it came out. This is many, uh, this is around the, actually this is, was before or after I got red pilled. I don't know. Bill Cooper was my red pill, but it took me years after that to really start considering a lot of these ideas. And I read behold a pale horse in 2002 and this movie came out in 2001. Yeah, maybe. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Point is, the first time I watched it, I thought it was kind of dry. It's kind of long. I didn't love it. Uh, I thought it was fine. So I didn't really want to watch it again. But, you know, and plus, anything over 90 minutes, it's got to really be worth it, in my opinion. Two and a half hours for AI, that's a tough sell for me. So I saw that Amazon Prime had it, and I thought, why not? Let's give it a shot. So here we are, and wow, am I, it, watching it again is through a whole new filter, and it all makes so much sense, and of course, I'm going to give you a spoiler alert, if you haven't seen it yet, go watch it, alright, jeez, go watch it and come back, how many years before you have to warn about spoiling the plot, anyways, we're just going to go through this chronologically, because that's the way it makes the most sense to me. And maybe you can even follow along. I don't know. 
don't know what your day looks like. You can follow along and watch the film. But the opening speech of the film, you've got this, you know, the big tech guy. He's talking about how they're going to create this robot. And this robot will will learn to love using this new technology. Which the implication here is uh, an earmuffs, kids. The, <laughs> the implication here is that at this point in history, they're just banging robots. They make them look like humans and they're just banging them. And that's all they're good for, right? So the idea of Big Tech Guy says he wants to make them have a closer bond with their owner. And um, and later, Big Tech Guy is asked by one of the workers how a robot would love a human. How could that, how could that be? How could that happen? And Big Tech Guy says, well, God created Adam to love him. So there you have it. That's... That is the the big scheme here. The big agenda is man becoming God. That's what it's all about. Man becoming immortal, evolving, using the enlightenment, the Luciferian enlightenment and the intellect and the wisdom to surpass God the Father. Yes, indeed. Now, of course, these, these robot dolls are called mechas. But the the next scene, presumably we sort of fast forward a couple years, and the mother, I believe her name is Monica, yes, it's Monica, the mother, Monica, I'm not good with names if you didn't know that, so I like to, uh, <laughs> and especially like you don't care, I don't care, you don't care, the names are like Monica, David, I'm going to talk, uh, I'm probably going to just call mom and dad, okay? So mom, she shows up at this big tech company it's called cryogenics and she walks past this wall that has murals painted on it and what do you know Alice in Wonderland right there Alice in Wonderland ties into all this because Alice in Wonderland of course is the initiation tale where the initiate goes underground and learns the new perspective of reality and comes back as part of the hero's journey to share the boons. So we're we're being we're being showed shown that this is an initiate's tale. It's a mass ritual, and of course, there's a bunch of several other childhood stories on the wall. It's not just Alice in Wonderland. Just to play devil's advocate here, but I did notice Alice in Wonderland, of course. Now, this big tech company, if you look at their logo, it looks like the cross of Leviathan or the symbol for sulfur or the phallus. It looks a bit like the phallus. And I'll put images on IlluminatiWatcher.com where you can look at all this stuff. And the workers there, they pull up the husband, dad, Henry is his name. They pull up dad's file and it has a reference to their child because you see, you see mom and dad, Monica and Henry, they had a real life human child, but this, this child was hooked up to ventilators and they were trying to pull the plug, I guess. And, you know, later on you find out after they adopt the robot boy, David, which we're going to get into here, they the boy comes off the ventilator and all that and he comes home and he's fine. But what's curious here is at this scene, if you zoom in, if you pause and zoom in again, images on Illuminati watcher.com, you'll see that it says Sinclair virus strikes local youth referring to their son and Sinclair. What an interesting name that is. That is one of the bloodlines of the Illuminati. Yes, indeed. St. Clair's. All goes back to the uh, Rosy Cross, the Knights Templars, and all that stuff. Now, Henry, Dad, he brings home this AI boy, David, played by the kid from Sixth Sense, who is a train wreck now. <laughs> uh, and um, you'll notice in the film, David takes his first couple steps in the front door, and he steps off of... He takes this first step down onto the landing, but then 
pulls his foot back up, which is very curious. And he and he's standing on a rug on the top of that first step. And he makes a note to say he likes the floor. Now, to the untrained eye, this was just a thing that happened. But why is that? Why was that a scene? Why did this kid step off and then step right back up and say, Oh, I like this. I like this uh, floor. Well, if you look at the floor, again, images available, you'll see that the rug has spirals all over it. Yes, the spirals. We talked about the spirals in the past. We talked about it on The Revenant. It's prominent symbolism in The Revenant. It's on Dark City. It's on True Detective Season 1. They carve it on the back of their victims. It's the evolution of man. That's what the spiral represents. Evolving mankind. What do you think the movie's about? When are you going to wake up? (laughs) I'm just being mean. But yeah, so the spirals are on the rug. Clearly, Spielberg was giving us some of the, the wisdom, some of the knowledge of the Gnosis, the secret esoteric wisdom that Kubrick surely would have given us given us, had he been alive to do the film, if they hadn't killed him after Eyes Wide Shut, for revealing the Gnostic mass sex parties. Now, to keep David, the robot boy, mom and dad have to verbalize a seven-word string that permanently imprints the child to the parents to make them connected, to force this robotic consciousness to love them. And it's curious that Henry, dad, makes a point to tell her to be very sure she wants to do this before she imprints. And just to just to back it up a touch, dad in this movie is an idiot. He's just this doofus and he is your archetypal tech dad nerd that... You know, he's just, oh, look at this cool toy, boop doop a doo And, you know, Mom, Monica, she's she's consciously aware something isn't right about this whole thing. She's a bit more evolved than him, okay? And I don't know that, and this is what's curious, does art reflect reality or vice versa? But, like, a lot of guys are completely out of touch and don't think about these things and... Just oh, give me the give me the Fitbit watch and I'm gonna watch my heart rate. Meanwhile, they're collecting all this data. Meanwhile, you're shooting EMF radiation all over your body with that thing. Guys are supposed to not care about anything. That's the that's now that's the toxic masculinity we've we've hinted on before. I know a lot of you don't like that kind of liberal softy talk, but that's the way it is. It's a bit of the bit of the toxic masculinity coming out. You know, dad's just, this is the latest toy. Dad likes the big toys for Christmas. And that's what this is. That's what David is. That's what the robot is. He's an idiot. (laughs) And, uh, you know, not to stereotype or generalize, but I don't know that's so far off. You know, mom, she's got that motherly spirit. She knows. She's more in tune with nature. She's more in tune with reality. So, anyways... Where were we? Henry, his dad, is warning her, make sure you want... Because he just brings the kid home. He doesn't care. He's an idiot. He's like, oh, I'm going to get this kid. Bring him home. And then mom sees the kid and is like, what the hell did you bring home? And he's like, oh, this would be great. Big Tech says it's going to be... He's going to be great. Great replacement for the real human kid. And the mom's like, what the hell? Who did I marry? Who are you? You know? Now, what was curious was that for them to permanently imprint, which this sounds a lot like Mark of the Beast talk, right? The permanent imprint. They have to verbalize a seven-word string. Wow, how can you how can you not want to hear the rest of that? That was so good. So fascinating. But let me tell you, it gets better. That rabbit hole goes much deeper. We're going to get into the... Uh, the all-seeing eye symbolism, the gray aliens. Do you know they show up in a cube? A black cube? Ha! What do you think of that? And then, uh, of course, the Gnostic symbolism that you find at the end of the film. It's all revealed. Go to patreon.com backslash Illuminati Watcher. 
As always, stay woke.